Dr. Robin Toomouth, um, you spoke to us tonight about obesity. I just wonder if you could uh, recap for us what the impacts um, of obesity are. Well, they're very diverse. I'm familiar with diabetes as the most powerful impact of obesity, but um, it impacts on all aspects of health. You know, cancer is increased in obese individuals. There are joint replacements, liver disease, respiratory disease. Um, a very diverse range of health issues are directly related to obesity. And you talked about um, an obesity epidemic, yet you're against um, telling people to lose weight. Well, I would like people to be slimmer for their health, but I don't think that people have it within their power to lose weight. If you've got a genetic predisposition which hardwires you to seek out high energy foods, and a high proportion of the population does have this genetic tendency, and we're beginning to identify those particular genes, and you immerse individuals in an environment where food is ubiquitous, where advertising is everywhere you look, where food is available 24 hours a day, and increasingly the type of food that is available is high energy, nutrient poor food, then it's no surprise that people are susceptible to obesity and become overweight. They are unable to control their weight in such circumstances. And yet is obesity um, more prevalent in certain socioeconomic groups or um, ethnic groups or age groups uh, as well as being genetically and environmentally driven? Well, I, I think it's very difficult to separate the genetics out from those groupings that you've just described, and I think that the way in which those track together has yet to be teased out. Mm. So New Zealand has um, an obesity epidemic along with other first world um, nations. What can we do about it? I think we need to protect individuals from the things which are driving the obesity epidemic. So we need to look at restricting the exposure of children in particular to inducements to eat high energy foods in greater quantities than they need. So once we have this frame of reference, there are a million things that we could do to reduce advertising, to reduce availability, to reduce uh, package sizes, to maintain minimum standards for food. Um, the possibilities are huge. Well, if the possibilities are huge and the research is all there, um, why isn't it happening? I think this is something that would be good to ask our politicians. Certainly all of the surveys of the general public that we have done shows that there's a high um, there's a high degree of support for such simple things as reducing advertising on television. You know, between 80 and 90 percent of individuals want children to be protected from these adverse influences. Um, you'd have to ask the politicians why they're not responding to that. So when you say I'd have to ask the politicians, I guess my question to you would be, say I'm ordinary Joe public, what can I do? I mean, it just seems such a huge issue. Uh, tonight was one of our longest meetings, and I think people would have stayed longer because it's a fascinating topic. But at the end of it, perhaps a feeling of being a bit swamped, a bit powerless, a bit like someone who's obese in a way. What, what do we do? I think that's a very good question. I think that... You know, how we make the politicians aware that public sentiment is behind, you know, a protective environment, that the general public do not see nanny state as being um, a problem in this area, they see it as being uh, protective. Um, I think this is something that people just simply need to, you know, take whatever opportunities come their way to, you know, to make politicians aware that this is how we view, um, you know, the drivers of obesity. And so you're interested in the so-called food environment rather than a medical solution uh, to this? Absolutely. It has almost nothing to do with health. We're the, uh, we're the sort of the recipients of the downstream effect, but this is absolutely not a medical issue. This is a societal issue. Thank you very much.